<laughs> so I found a place in Smith River, California. It's only 59 miles from here. We still have a little sunlight left, so we can hit that up. Have some more park. Be in California. So when we wake up in the morning, we can head south on 101 to start our adventure. Our next adventure, rather. in the shot here. And what is the deal with this wood? Does anybody know that can comment on how this wood look? It looks like cut stumps, cut with chainsaws on the beach and it's all strewn the length of what we're walking. So if you know the history of how it, this got here, what the deal is behind it, please put it in the comments, thanks. There's so much clutter in here. It's not that, it's not really because Sarah and the dog, her three dogs are in here. It's just like that. And this has been an evolution. I haven't worked that hard on this bus. I got it ready to be lived in. And then I just stopped and we're talking about what to do with this table. What I want to do, this is a furnace right here. This is a 16,000 BTU furnace with a four stage thermostat. I love it. It runs on propane. One of the propane tanks is right there. I've, I had a custom made hose built really long for it. And what I want to do is build, you can't see behind the chair is a washing machine. This is the big dog food bin. And there's a motorcycle I'm sitting on here. So it can't go, you know, there's no room forward right now with the motorcycle when this is in motion, but I can build a dresser right here where it says shock top, that's the electronics. A dresser right here that goes up to the top of the window. I don't wanna go above this right here. This is Panduit for wiring. I don't wanna go above that because there needs to be access to that. So the dresser would come up to right here. But I would custom build this spot and then a little shelf for the ice maker. The ice maker is right here. And I can build a little shelf or maybe even a shelf with a cabinet below that'll fit the propane tank. What do you think, Sarah? I'm thinking that would be a smart move because as necessity, as much of a necessity as the propane tanks are, they're just not very attractive. And when you want to make a place your home, you want it to not look like your garage. So just easily adding a couple more walls to um, you're already building the dresser and you're already building the shelf you legit just need two more walls and then you're hiding your propane tank and it's a lot closer to the heater not that that matters because you have the long line but it just kind of moves that over here and frees up this space for who knows what like the options it just opens up so many more options for this section of the rig um, so I think that would be a really great plan moving forward to help you. The biggest thing in our lifestyle is the, if you, if everything doesn't have a home, then when you're traveling, things go here. And when you're living, things go somewhere else. And if you can minimize that to, okay, I left the blender up top. I should just put that under so it doesn't go flying across the rig. That is so much less than let me empty my whole front seat and put it back over here, but I have to put it back in the front seat when I actually want to live in my bed or do whatever. So the less you have to move things, the better. And I think that would be a huge first step to lessen the moving things. I also have all these water containers 
I carry 21, maybe 30, say 33, 34 gallons of water mm -hmm. for different uses. And you see that they're in the aisle way, kind of taking up space. Maybe we can re organized underneath the bed and do something about that too. It definitely helps. Um, me temporarily being in the bus as well, Jamie's like, I gotta make room for you. So I, he gave me this bin and I filled up half of it with my food and the other half with my clothes. So now that we've eaten most of the food, I was clearing it out just to see. And it looks like the water tanks fit perfectly under the bed. So now that he knows he can make room for me, I'm not a permanent fixture here. So now this space can be used for clearing the aisle out. And then that's one less thing. They will have their permanent home and you only have to take it out when you need more water. So that would be another huge aisle clearer and one less thing you have to do when you're settling in. This section is already settled. You don't even have to worry about it. Maybe while we're waiting on parts to come in on the Anaheim job, we could go out somewhere where there's camping, public land, and get some plywood and work on it. I think it's a good idea. I'm excited. <laughs> I love home improvements. <laughs> You'll have one less thing off your list that you're just like, I know you weren't. He's so, it's such a giving dude. He's always like, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? It's time for us to do for him. So I'm here to get it, get our asses in gear and start building his rig out so he's living more comfortably. So then, like, he's not always in a good mood, but imagine his mood when he doesn't have to do all this extra stuff. We're gonna be overwhelmed with greatness coming from the Jamie. So, uh, you're welcome. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm excited. All right. I'll run some outlets too. We'll run some outlets from that inverter because that's a big one. Heck yeah. And then we'll have outlet power. Do it all. When we're doing it, let's do it all. Let's not add, th let's finish it up. Let's make that section what it's supposed to be. Okay. Well, if we're going to do that, then we're going to have to drop the motorcycle and do all that stuff, but we'll we just do, do it. it. We're capable. All right. Let's get on it. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Ah! <laughs> okay. What I would like to do with this space to be able to not have so many free floating necessities in the bus is build a basically a dresser and a cabinet and the dresser is going to start here start here go up to the bottom of this this needs to be able to come off at all times for service service later so I don't want to take it all the way to the ceiling So it's just gonna come up to right here. It's gonna have a little bit of an angle to it so I don't bump my shoulder when I'm walking by. I want it to be like a B cut. And then a cabinet right here to put some shirts and some basically hang up clothes, but my motorcycle stuff. My motorcycle stuff mostly has this dedicated bin in the back and it's hard to get to. There's still a big dirt bike boots if you know what those look like. They kind of look like ski boots that aren't gonna go in here, but my day-to-day -day leathers are always just about the cabin in disarray, and so this will give us the ability to hang that up and make it look neat. So that's the idea. Let's get started. I think it would be best to hook up the outlets, the power outlets, the 110 first. We've got this wonderful inverter that we've been using and pretty much taxing it to the hilt. And it's a great inverter, but it's only 1,000, 2,000 peak. And I've got a 2,000 watt. I don't know what the peak is on it, thanks to Lee Blake. It's a modified sine wave. That's also a charger. So it's hooked up to, I hooked it up to shore power. When you plug it in, it passes through the battery system goes straight to the outlets 110 and charges the batteries at a rate of I believe either a hundred or 75 amps per hour and then drops down accordingly as the batteries start to begin to be topped off anyway 
This inverter down here is just a black box. I'm not gonna move all this stuff to show it to you. It's just a black box. Can't even tell what it is. Doesn't even have any lettering on it. I'm gonna run some outlets out. I'm gonna put an outlet, I believe, right here. So I've got one in this location, in spite of this, that I can pass right through for heavy tools out the door for van build stuff or even this. And then another outlet maybe on just the other side of where the ice maker is going to go and then yeah. all the way over to the bed there'll be another one still and i'll show you what these wall plates that i'm using look like they've got the usb the high powered usb connected to them it's a great way to go living in a vehicle it's a great way to go in a house too i suppose with all the things that run off of usb nowadays anyway we're going to start with that so let's get going i'm going to cut this run an outlet here, maybe do some cabinets and get the wires in place so I know exactly where the outlets are gonna fall. But I'll show you all of it, Sarah and I. <laughs> If you're working on a schoolie build, chances are there's gonna be a heater in the back someplace mounted on the ground for the passengers that you're gonna to wanna to remove so you can use that space. And that's what I'm doing right now. So I just wanna show you what I'm working with. Some are gonna be different, but at least you'll get an idea of what you're dealing with and how to remove that heater successfully. Let's take a look. Little helpers. In order for these heaters to work, they've got to get the coolant fluid from the engine back to them. So you see this encasing right here. That's what that is. These are the these are the hoses or pipes that run the coolant back to this unit. And can you see that okay? You got your fan, your radiator, the coolant runs through the radiator, the fan blows the heat out. We want it gone. So I took all the screws out. I've got to take some out on the back, it feels like. There's a, probably a couple on the back. Or one. But I took all this out, and here's our hoses. So they did just run hoses. What I'm going to do is take probably this hose clamp off and run this hose over to this fitting. It's just a 90, a, like a street 90. Okay. I took the bottom one off because I was going to take the bottom off there. So I got to put that back on. back more. That's better.
alarming that it drips like that. Oh, I see what you did there. Thank you very much and see how I made a little special place for it. So, you know who you are, you don't like to be mentioned. Thank you. Well, it looks like we've got a good stopping point. And here's what we came up with. There's a, a table that's replacing that big long table and a shelf. Can you move that piece of wood, please? A shelf for the ice maker. So it has a place, but it's not taking up that table. You know, that big table is in the way. We've got the propane that runs the furnace right there for now. I might enclose that. This, there's the furnace and under the towel is the washing machine and here are our compartments that's going to wind up being enclosed but right now that's what we have we're going to call it even with this and then here are my two curtain rods or uh, hanger rods for my leather jackets and the clothes that hang up that's going to be a big help because those leather jackets were just always in the way, always getting moved. I've got a outlet, 110 outlet here for the washing machine and the charger for the motorcycle. There's an outlet down here, if you could see it. Let me see if I'm doing this. There's an outlet down here, mm -hmm. right there. Get yeah. Here. That's for the ice maker and... Seems like there was something else right there, but that's for that. And then there's yet a third outlet. I'll move this. Let me move the chair for you. And that's got USBs on it because I'm always charging little handheld devices at the bedside. And one more. One more right here. That way I can not only access power here off of the big inverter but I can also have an outlet so I can run cords right out the door if I want to use power and that big inverter is also a charger when it's plugged into shore power so here we go this is kind of let me get back at least for now this is the after picture should probably move some stuff out of the way but See if that does us any good, freeing up some room. Big thank you to Sarah because a lot of the ideas that happened were hers. All right, I'm gonna go get see if I can get some hangers to hang up that leather stuff. Outlets, I've got outlets. I've got one, two, three, four outlets on this side now that are powerful enough to run anything, including the vacuum cleaner, which is huge. It's a good day. We're here in California heading south to Anaheim for CeCe's job and Chloe, the, our biggest pet on board, has a hard time traveling. She gets really anxious and she's done some pretty crazy things in my bus, which is big. And she's also done has a history of doing some crazy things in Sarah's uh, 
rig, such as eat her way out of a metal crate, busting her teeth in the process, after she was put in the metal crate to not tear up the van when she's driving. So here's Chloe. She's been in video before. And she has a hard time traveling and she shouldn't have to have a hard time traveling. We can't tell her what's going on. We can't really, she doesn't speak English. So we're going to try vet something CBD. different. Some vet CBD that we picked up at a uh, outlet here in Sacramento. And you can see Sarah's putting it on the food. Chloe. Dosing it according to the manufacturer's what? recommendations. And let's see if she's going to have any problem with the flavor of it. It looks like the answer to that is going to be no problem negative. And this is, again, Vet CBD. Let's see. Right there. Vet CBD, 250 milligrams. This would sell for about $90 at the... Dispensary? Do they call them dispensaries? Yeah. Okay. So it's about 90 bucks you're looking at right there, which should last about a month for a dog that size. Mm -hmm.